Hey guys and gals, today in the shop we're going to be making our own wooden mallet. Now I know some of you may be thinking, why not just go out and buy a mallet and not spend all this time making our own? It's not a bad idea. Well, there's really nothing cooler than having a tool that you use every day that you made yourself. So I've got this perfect piece of oak that I saved from the trash bin and this will make a great head for the mallet. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is head over to the jointer. We're gonna smooth out two faces and make sure that they're 90 degrees to each other. After that, we're gonna head over to the bandsaw and I'm gonna resaw this down into two boards that are about one inch thick. And finally, we're gonna head over to the planer where I'll mill these down to the final size and make sure that all the faces are parallel to each other. So we've got the two pieces that I milled up for the head of our mallet. These are around an inch thick at the moment. I've also got this piece that I dug out of the scrap bin for the handle. Um, good thing about making your own tools is you can build them to suit your needs. So for me, a good handle width is about an inch and a quarter. Feels pretty good. And I'm gonna be just under an inch wide. It's a little oversized right now because I want to run all three of these pieces through the planer to get them down to the exact same thickness so we can glue them up. With all of our pieces milled to the same thickness, we're going to head over to the miter saw. Here I'm going to set the angle to two and a half degrees and make a cut on one end of the boards for our mallet head. This is going to create the wedge so that we can attach our handle. Now we set the miter saw back to zero degrees and cut our parts to three and a half inches. And now we need two more pieces cut to seven inches. And while we're at the miter saw, we'll trim our handle down to its final length of about 14 inches. All right, so now we've got all our pieces cut. It's time to glue up the head of our mallet. We should have two end pieces and two pieces to go into the middle. Now these have the bevel cuts on them, so they'll create a wedge to hold the handle in place. Now on one of the end pieces, I've made a couple of lines. I marked the center point and a half inch to either side. This is gonna help us create the spacing so that we can get the handle into the center of the mallet. Now I just need to put some glue onto each side to hold these in place. And I'm gonna show y'all some really neat glue spreaders that I've got. They're, they can be a little expensive, but they're all natural, biodegradable, reusable, and they're easy to clean. Well, I, I got too many of them out. I, I just need the one. That's not funny. That's not funny at all. So we just use our spreader, move the glue around, get a nice even coverage. Clean our spreader off. Now we take our end piece and we're going to get it flush with the bottom and get it to where it just touches the line. And once I've got that in place, I'm just use a couple of brad nails to hold it. Go ahead and put the other one on. A couple of quick brad nails. Now a bit more glue on the top. Use our glue spreader again. Get that all spread out good. Now put the other one in place. Now I'm gonna clamp this up and let it dry. Now you're probably gonna have a little bit of glue squeeze out inside where the handle goes, and that's gonna interfere with the fit when we try to put the handle in later. So we need to take care of that before it dries up. So I always keep these little plastic straws in the shop. These are perfect for just running along the inside corner where you can't reach and gets out the glue. Let's run it right along the inside and clean all that out. All right, so while the glue for the head of our mallet is drying, let's start working on the handle. 
And since this is an inch and a quarter wide and the slot we have in the head is an inch wide, we need to take a little bit of material off each side to make a tenon that will go into the head of the mallet. Now I'm gonna take my block plane and just shave a little bit off of each end of this tenon to get it perfect. Now that we've got a good snug fit, let's shape the handle so it'll be a little bit more comfortable to hold. Here at the router table, I've got a chamfer bit set up so that we can shape the handle of our mallet. Now I don't want the chamfer to go all the way to both ends of the mallet. I want a wide part at the bottom of the mallet to keep my hand from sliding off of the handle. So that's what the first stop block is going to do. And the second stop block is so that we have the handle widen out before it meets the head of the mallet. The next thing we need for our handle is make a couple of relief holes and then take it over to the bandsaw and cut a couple of slots for the wedges. With the head of the mallet dry, I'm going to square it up on the jointer and then take it over to the bandsaw and clean up the top. And back to the miter saw, we trim the ends of the mallet head. We're going to cut these at a two and a half degree angle. At the router table, we'll use our chamfer bit to break all the edges. Now to make sure that I get the wedges to the perfect angle, I'm taking one of the cutoffs from the miter saw and I'm going to glue that to a piece of scrap and I'm going to use this as a guide to go through the bandsaw. Just a couple drops of CA glue, some activator, so we get an immediate bond. All right, so now it's time to actually assemble our mallet. So let's fit the handle in here. Really good fit. 
Got our wedges. Add a little bit of glue. Don't forget about that patented glue spreader. That one started. Seated all the way and and what I said earlier about it being really cool to work with tools that you made yourself this by the way is a brass hammer that I made about 20 years ago in machine shop class. Still really cool getting to use this all the time. Brings back a lot of memories. All right, we've got the head of our mallet on, glue is set. We need to sand down the top, get this nice and smooth, and also go over the rest of the mallet with some sandpaper and smooth out all the rough edges. All right, so we've got everything sanded down, uh, smooth, feeling really nice. So we're gonna apply a finish and I'm gonna use some Watco Danish oil because, well, that's what I've got on hand and I don't need to run out and buy anything special to put on this. All right, hang on a second. Break out the big guns. these caps. All right, so we're just gonna put a good amount on a rag and just rub this into the wood and keep applying as long as the wood's soaking it in. You may be able to apply several coats of this. Especially on the end grain, that's gonna soak up a lot of this oil. So there's no way to do this without it looking weird. Y'all knock it off. All right, so that's the first coat. We'll do a couple more coats, waiting half an hour to an hour between coats, and just keep applying until we've had oh, three to five coats to give it a good, uh, good finish, good protection. So a mallet like this is a great addition to any shop and something that you could use for many, many years, which actually, got me to thinking while I was building this about something I said earlier about how cool it is to be able to build a project with tools that you've made yourself. And, and it really is. But something that's even better than that is one day these tools can be passed on to our kids or our grandkids. And one day they could be in their shop building their own projects with tools that I made many, many years prior. And that is really cool. Actually, this gives me an idea.
kids have been wanting to help me with the video for a while and this seemed like a perfect opportunity to do something fun with them and get them involved. I think they really enjoyed it. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs>